you by any chance still have that onesie with red right and yellow left sides? The one you wouldn't go to sleep without because you were fascinated by its colors. Did you pay close attention to the clown's costume at the numerous parties you attended as a kid? How it had pink on the right side and yellow on the left? Or were you behind the chair scared half to death? Now that's what in the fashion industry is called party color. Its elegance was clearly demonstrated by Ashish in the Mathlete Spring 2013 when she rocked a party colored outfit with denim and a glittery backside. This trend was also incorporated by designers like John Fredericks back in the 1940s. Yes, it's been here that long and way before that. Here's its story, where we will tell you more about it. Hello and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will talk about party color fashion history. Please subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you haven't done so. Buckle up, let's ride. The complete costume dictionary would describe party color as a fashion prevalent in medieval Europe from the late 12th century and became a fashion zenith in the 15th century, wherein garments were made in one color and designed on one half or quarter and a different color or pattern on the other sections. Commonly worn by either sex, from ladies' gowns to men's tunics, hoods and cloaks. Masculine hose was most often party colored, divided vertically down the center of the leg, front and back and often quartered at the knee, which highlighted accent and distinction to a well-turned leg. This means they even wore two different colors of feathers in the hat and two different colored shoes to coordinate with the rest of their ensemble. Their jewelry is the only thing they wore that was not of the party color. They had golden belts and brooches holding his hat's alternating feathers. It was believed that the popularity of partially colored clothing increased in heraldry. According to Wilcox, it became common practice among the titled to show a coat of arms. The family coat of arms was imprinted on the costumes in gold and silver leaf and colored enamels, separated into varied colors. These family's colors and coats of arms were combined when they got married. The family treasured and passed down this historical attire. Partially colored clothing quickly spread to other areas of fashion. European attire started to change and become fashionable in the late Middle Ages. The cut, shape, style, and decoration of clothes changed considerably more quickly than before, and it was no longer merely a matter of costume with minimal variation in style through time. In the 14th century, woolen hose, or chausses, which covered men's legs, were typically vividly colored. There were many different types of wool fabrics available, from coarse, undyed cloth to fine, dense broadcloth with a velvety nap. The backbone of the English economy was high-value broadcloth, which was exported all throughout Europe. Rich hues, including reds, greens, golds, and blues, were used to dye wool garments. The horizontal loom with foot treadles and shuttles simplified the production of textiles and clothing after the spinning wheel replaced the drop spindle and distaff. As attractive clothing became more widely available and more reasonably priced, the emerging middle class started to imitate the elite's fashions. By the last quarter of the 14th century, the two distinctly colored legs of hose had reached the waist and were joined into one item, similar to what we now refer to as tights. This was made possible by improved tailoring techniques. Some of them could be worn barefoot and had leather soles. Full-length leg coverings were initially made of two separate pieces fastened with points to the breech belt, breeches, or even a doublet. Tosses typically had a seam down the back and were cod pieces or overlapping panels that covered the crotch. Tosses, similar to modern tights, were created as a single item as men's clothing became shorter in style. Shoes of different colors were frequently worn with a party-colored hose. Red and blue were fashionable color combinations for apparel in the 14th century. Full-length hose in party color could be cut from woven materials using Italian tailoring techniques. Leggings can be made to fit snugly around the lower torso and leg using curved seams. A closer fit over the body emerged in vogue, and a well-fitted hose was a crucial piece of clothing for gentry and noblemen. As the prominence of men's legs and leg coverings increased, the party-colored hose was worn without the matching top, limiting the color split only to the legs, with each leg being a distinct color. Throughout each phase of their popularity, Men's hosiery displayed a variety of color and pattern trends. Red and blue was the most common color pattern for apparel. 
the merchant class and a new upwardly mobile middle class suddenly had access to the exquisite attire that was previously worn by royalty and was now affordable. The Gothic style, which highlighted slenderness and an extended body for both men and women, had an impact on the late Middle Ages fashion. Court jesters once relied on elaborate talents like singing, music, magic, and storytelling to obtain a position in the court. Then, during the end of the Middle Ages, when party-colored attire lost its appeal, jesters commonly wore a coat composed of a variety of colors, usually vivid and randomly patterned. They frequently wore tight breeches with one leg that was colored differently than the other underneath this coat. No one knows if this was done to parody the outmoded party attire. Seeing a full dressed and garish attire with clashing color schemes and various humorous decorations made people laugh immediately. Shoes were also used in the party color fashion. In the Middle Ages, wearing ling toed shoes, polaines, became a male fetish. Men's shoes became longer and longer until they were 24 inches longer than the foot. The right leg shoe would be made to match the color of the right side of the left shoe with the left side. They also used patterns to protect the foot segments of the chausses. Until Spalding, a sports manufacturer, created saddle shoes, Saddle Oxfords, in 1906, the trend for party color had fallen into abeyance for ages. White soles with black and white uppers were originally popular among young Americans for casual use. Where the most stress is placed, the overlaying saddle added additional strength to the flexor surface of the shoes. These were immediately adapted for use in well-liked sports, and many private schools adopted saddle shoes as part of their dress code, choosing the shoe's color to coordinate with the school's colors. Saddle shoes were used alongside spectators, two-tone brogues, first worn for golf and later in the jazz age. Both men's and women's dance shoes became spectators. Jazz lovers who promoted racial harmony by donning two-tone shoes did so when black artists gained more acceptance. In the 1930s, the trend was at its height. As with so many other things, this was temporarily revived as a trend for women in the 1960s and 1970s when party-colored gowns that were either quartered or made of tessellated forms, often squares or diamonds, made frequent appearances in both high and retail fashion. With small dresses in retro block colors with party-color foundation, mod designers like Mary Quant revived two-tones in her clothes in the 1960s. She wanted matching lid coverings so women could dance, run, and move and she always came up with new ideas. The Nylon Hosiery Company, which had devised a method of producing long stockings that came together at the top and were particularly dyed to contrast and coordinate with Mary Quant separates, encouraged the designer to team up with them. When pop performers Dave D, Dozy, Bicky Mick, and Titch adopted Me Party fashion for their onstage attire in 1966, party clothing briefly made a comeback. The party fashion trend was unfortunately short-lived. More lately, there have been unsuccessful attempts to bring back multicolored clothing and footwear on the catwalk. The novelty, meanwhile, did not succeed in courting people's attention. Party color clothing is considered gaudy and cartoonish today. Only clowns wear clothing like that. They are a good approach to emphasize a character from fish out of temporal water because they are dressed in styles that were considered fashionable a few hundred years before them. A time traveler can be mistaken for a performer if they arrive dressed in party color from too far back in history. They will either be met with laughter or icy looks if they stray even further from the point. Party color has fanatics too. The goddess Hell loved it so intensely that she has matching tattoos on her flesh. That's it for today. I hope the video has shed light on everything party color. Have you already made a party color pair of jeans? Or will you make one after this video? Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe, like, and share. Adios.